I'm going to go ahead and read you verses 1 through 3 again, and that's what we're going to go through today. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Most of us have either read the book of Jonah or you've heard it now, but at least most people, even if they haven't read it, are familiar with the remarkable aspects of the book. The first question we have to ask, is this story literally true? The answer is yes. We are to accept it as such. It is to be taken as a literal and historical account of what occurred. There is no hint in the Bible that it is to be taken as an allegory or a myth. Although parts of it can be applied allegorically to events later in redemptive history, Jesus makes this perfectly clear. The person Jonah is mentioned 19 times in the Old Testament, once in the book of 2 Kings and 18 times in this book. That he was mentioned in 2 Kings establishes the fact that he was as real as any other figure mentioned in the Bible. There it records this, which occurred during the reign of Jeroboam, king of Israel. Listen carefully. In the 15th year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria and reigned 41 years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all of the sons of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. He restored the territory of Israel from the entrance of Hamat to the sea of the Arva, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he had spoken through his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet who was from Gath Hefer. In these three verses that I just read, six individuals are named, six locations are named, and a precise dating is given. Therefore, Jonah is to be considered a real person according to judicial law, which dates the following. Every document apparently ancient coming from the proper repository or custody and bearing on its face no evident marks of forgery, the law presumes to be genuine and devolves on the opposing party the burden of proving it to be otherwise. That is Simon Greenleaf, the principal founder of Harvard Law School. The record meets these requirements and it thus establishes Jonah as a true historical figure. Further, Jonah and his account, including the remarkable aspect of his time in the belly of the great fish, is referred to by Jesus nine times in seven verses of the books of Matthew and Luke. Therefore, to question the account of Jonah in the Old Testament as literal and historical is to then question the integrity of the Lord Jesus and the word of God itself. And so with the exception of some flowery verses in his prayer, which match those of the Psalms, and are therefore probably not literal, but rather applied to his mood at the time, there is no reason why the account should not be taken as having actually occurred. The answer, again, is yes. We are to accept the story of Jonah as literal, historical, and true. 